Imagine you're one of those 100 men. You're standing in a circle with 99 strangers, all of you staring at 400 pounds of pure muscle and fury. Your heart is pounding, your hands are shaking, and somewhere in your mind, a voice is asking the same question that's been haunting the internet since Mr. Beast's tweet. What am I even doing here? This isn't just a thought experiment anymore. It's a question of survival, and the answer might surprise you more than you think. So today, we're going to take this viral thought experiment seriously. We'll dive into the biomechanics of silverback gorillas, analyze human crowd psychology under extreme stress, and use actual physics to model how this hypothetical battle might unfold. Because sometimes the most ridiculous questions lead to the most fascinating answers. The question isn't just who would win, it's what this tells us about the nature of power, coordination, and survival itself. Let's establish our parameters clearly, because the details matter enormously here. We're talking about one fully grown silverback gorilla, not sedated, not sick, not caught off guard, facing 100 average human males. No weapons, no tools, just flesh against flesh in an open arena about the size of a basketball court. The men aren't trained fighters. They're regular guys, maybe some gym experience, but no military background or martial arts training. They start about 20 meters away from the gorilla, and everyone knows what's about to happen. No surprise attacks, no ambushes. This is as fair as we can make an inherently unfair fight. Now, why does this matter? Because in nature, the most dangerous predators aren't always the biggest. They're the ones that best exploit their advantages while minimizing their weaknesses. Let's start with what we're really dealing with here. A fully grown silverback gorilla isn't just big. It's a marvel of evolutionary engineering, specifically designed for raw, explosive power. We're talking about 350 to 440 pounds of muscle, bone, and fury. But here's where it gets interesting. Pound for pound, gorillas are roughly 6 to 10 times stronger than humans. That silverback can generate about 4,000 to 9,000 newtons of force with a single strike. To put that in perspective, a heavyweight boxer's punch peaks at around 1,000 newtons. But strength is just the beginning. Gorilla bones are significantly denser than human bones. They've evolved to withstand impacts that would shatter our skeletons. Their muscle fiber composition is about 30% fast twitch compared to our 25%, meaning they can generate explosive bursts of power that we simply cannot match. And then there's the bite force, 1,300 pounds per square inch. That's enough to crush a human skull like a watermelon. But here's what's really fascinating from an evolutionary standpoint. Gorillas didn't evolve to be killers. They evolved to be intimidators. In the wild, most gorilla confrontations end with chest beating and dominance displays, not death matches. They're essentially living, breathing psychological warfare machines. Now let's talk about the humans, because this is where the psychology gets really interesting. You have 100 men, collectively weighing about 17,000 pounds, nearly 50 times the gorilla's mass. That should be an overwhelming advantage, right? Not necessarily. Because humans aren't a hive mind, we're 100 individual brains, each making split-second calculations about risk, reward, and survival. And here's the brutal truth about crowd psychology. In high-stress situations, groups often behave worse than individuals. There's a phenomenon called the bystander effect. The more people present during an emergency, the less likely any individual is to take action. Everyone assumes someone else will act first. In our scenario, this could be catastrophic. But let's assume the best case scenario for the humans. They coordinate. They form a strategy. Maybe they create a Roman testudo formation, shields locked. Except they don't have shields. Maybe they attack in waves to exhaust the gorilla. But who volunteers for the first wave? Military historians have studied similar scenarios throughout history. When Alexander the Great's forces encountered war elephants, trained soldiers with bronze weapons still suffered massive casualties against single beasts. And those soldiers had discipline, weapons, and battle experience our 100 men lack. Let's get into the actual mechanics of how this fight would unfold. Because physics doesn't lie. 
When the gorilla charges, and it will charge, it's moving roughly 25 miles per hour while weighing 400 pounds. That's 2,400 pounds of momentum hitting the first line of men. For comparison, that's like being struck by a small motorcycle. The first impact alone would likely incapacitate three to five men instantly. Broken ribs, concussions, internal bleeding. These aren't action movie injuries you walk off. They're fight-ending trauma. But here's where it gets really interesting. What happens next depends entirely on human psychology. Do the remaining 95 men press forward, or do they instinctively step back after watching their friends get obliterated? If they press forward, the gorilla faces a mathematical problem. It can only engage a limited number of opponents simultaneously, even with its incredible reach, about eight feet from fingertip to fingertip. It can realistically fight maybe six to eight men at once. The rest would theoretically be able to attack from behind. But there's another factor we haven't discussed. Adrenaline. In humans, adrenaline can temporarily increase strength by 12 to 15%. In gorillas, the effect is even more pronounced. An enraged silverback is operating at levels of power that would be physiologically impossible for us to achieve. So, who wins? Honestly, it depends entirely on human psychology and coordination, factors that are notoriously unpredictable under extreme stress. But I think we're missing the deeper point here. This viral question isn't really about guerrillas or combat tactics. It's about how we think about power in the modern world. We're so used to technological solutions and coordinated systems that we've almost forgotten what raw individual power looks like. The gorilla represents something primal, the idea that sometimes individual excellence can overcome numerical superiority. It's David versus Goliath, except David doesn't have a sling and Goliath is a 400-pound apex predator. The 100 men represent civilization itself, the notion that cooperation and coordination are humanity's greatest strengths, even when facing individually superior opponents. In a way, this thought experiment is really asking, in the most basic, stripped-down confrontation imaginable, what wins, individual excellence or collective action? Mr. Beast probably didn't expect his simple tweet to open up questions about evolutionary biology, crowd psychology, and the nature of power itself. But that's the beauty of good questions. They reveal more than we initially expect. So what do you think? Are you Team Gorilla, rooting for the lone warrior of nature, the individual excellence of millions of years of evolution? Or are you Team Humanity, believing that coordination, strategy, and collective action can overcome any individual threat? Let me know in the comments and if you enjoyed this deep dive into a ridiculous question, hit that subscribe button. Because apparently, the most absurd questions lead to the most fascinating answers.